All right, hey guys, I'm Prerank. If you're new to these videos, I'm making these sort of like MCAT review videos. But um, aside from kind of just giving you the lowdown and specific topics, these are also intended to help anyone who's not even studying for the MCAT kind of gradually ease themselves into it. And so these videos are kind of intended to cover specific things the MCAT covers, all the while giving you an insight into how to study for the test. So whether you're experienced or inexperienced, I'm just trying to cater to all ages, ranges. So with that said, let's get into today's question. Today's question says, serine threonine kinases are enzymes that phosphorylate the serine slash threonine residues within specific proteins. Based on this information, what functional group do you think this enzyme phosphorylates? The reason why I personally think this makes a great uh, MCAT question is because it combines plus OCHEM. Because it's OCHEM in the sense that you need to know the specific functional groups. It's biology because it's relating it to a specific biological enzyme, which is great. We're all for that. Um, so you'll see here we're talking about carboxyl, carbonyl, hydroxyl, amine, amide. Which of those do you think this enzyme phosphorylates? So before we even get into that, I want to talk a bit about these kinases. So kinases... Um, you have obviously heard of kinases a lot in biology. They like to put phosphorylate. They like to phosphorylate um, substrates. Okay, and when they phosphorylate them, these substrates generally tend to get activated. Uh, but that's not always the case. There are some substrates that are inactivated by phosphorylation. So I'm just going to say phosphorylate substrates. Um, more importantly, there are over 500 kinases in humans. 500 types. There are over 500 types of kinases, and within these 500 types, 125 of them are the serine threonine kinases. So I'm just trying to show you these are important kinases. And last but not least, these kinases, um, when they go awry, it goes all bad. So, you know, believe it or not, um, the expression of kinases is altered in many cancers. So again, I like to always give you some idea as to why I'm giving you a question about something and why it's biologically relevant. Um, and so just telling you, these kinases are important. And, uh, and last but not least, you may also know that these kinases are involved in these things called signal, ooh, I spell, don't know how to spell signal, signal transduction pathways. You know, you probably have heard of these kinases playing a big role in those, and they do. And so they're 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 a big part of that. And so, just to give you a load on on how they work. Um, so in this case, we have a serine threonine kinase, which is a specific type of kinase, uh, and it obviously phosphorylates serine slash threonine residues. So before we even get to serine and threonine, serine and threonines are part of a larger group of things that we like to call amino acids, right? This is an amino acid. Here's the general form of an amino acid right here. Um, but the reason why I'm, I have this arrow drawn is because in your body, the amino acids are not actually like this. In your body, the amino acids are actually NH3+, plus, and then you have a carbon, and then you have a C, double bond, double bond, O, and then O minus right here, and then you have an H, and then you have this R group. So this is often what's referred to at a, as a Zwitter ion. Um, I'm not even going to bother trying to spell this properly, um, but just know that that's what it's called, and that's what they're often uh, present in their body as. Zwitter ion. Okay, um, and that's how amino acids are present in your body. Notice that all amino acids have a carboxyl group, which is also known as an acidic group, and all amino acids also have an amino group, thereby the name amino acid right? Because all amino acids have an amino group and a carboxyl group. They have this hydrogen also. And the last thing is the R group. And the R group varies from one amino acid to the next. Some general things you might want to remember is that the pKa of these carboxyl groups that are present on amino acids tend to be about 2.2. And the pKa of these amino groups that are present tend to be about around 9.4. Okay. And so those, that's just my general gist. You should remember those pKa values. Um, and that's often why you get this um, zeuterionic form, because your body is at a pH of 7.4, which leaves the amino group to be protonated and the carboxyl group to be deprotonated. Henderson, Hasselbalch, all the way. But I'm stepping aside from the main point. Um, this is the general structure of an amino acid. There are four 
main groups of amino acids. So you may know that your body has 20 amino acids, but there are four main groups, okay? And I'm going to tell you what they are. So you have the polar amino acids, the nonpolar amino acids, the basic amino acids, and the acidic amino acids. Okay, those are the four main types of amino acids. Um, and those are the, that's the general gist. And those four main types are all governed by R group. So if the R group is an acid, then the amino acid is an acidic amino acid. If the R group is a base, then the uh, amino acid is a basic amino acid. If the R group is polar, then the amino acid is a polar amino acid. And last but not least, if R group is nonpolar, then the amino acid is nonpolar. But remember, in this instance, we're actually thinking about um, serine and threonine because the question is asking us about the serine-threonine kinase, right? So now let's look at the at the um, pictures of serine and threonine, which I have drawn here. Let me first of all, this is not in the Zwitter ion form, it's just something I took off the internet, but let me make sure we understand this. So in this group, this is the amino group, right? This is the carboxyl group. Um, and actually I'm going to circle the carboxyl group in orange just so I can relate it amongst the two. So let's do that. This is the carboxyl group. And in this instant, this is the carboxyl group and the um, and this is the amino group. Okay. Now notice that this is the R group for threonine and this right here is the R group for serine. Okay. So now we want to think about this. Because the question was asking which of these things is going to get phosphorylated kinase. Um, and as you can see, all of these have different functional groups. And in the R group, you might also notice something. The R group of each of these has another functional group. And I should draw that another color. I'm going to make that green. So I keep, I'm going to have to change this up, but I want to make that green just so you guys can see the relation. So you notice that there's a functional group there, there's a functional group there, hydroxyl. Okay, and I want to make sure we understand that. So right away we're doing well because we're officially um, looking, going through all our answer choices. So remember our answer choices were uh, hydroxyl, carboxyl, carbonyl, and amino. So this is a carbonyl group. Okay, carbonyl, and this is carbonyl. Okay, so in this instant, you'll see that these are all the four functional groups that the protein could phosphorylate. But which one do you think it actually does? So I'm going to tell you right now, the serine threonine kinase cannot actually phosphorylate amino carbonyl or carboxyl group. Because if it phosphorylated either of those, then it would phosphorylate all the amino acids, right? So think about it. Let me let me change back. So um, if, if amino plus carbonyl plus carboxyl, all of these functional groups, the amino functional group, the carbonyl functional group, and the carboxyl functional group are in all amino acids. So if the serine threonine kinase phosphorylated that, then it would phosphorylate all the amino acids, not just serine and threonine, right? And therefore, it can't be phosphorylating amino, carbonyl, and carboxyl groups because then it would phosphorylate all amino acids. In this case, we know that that's not the case. The enzyme only phosphorylates serine and threonine. So now, clearly, there's something special here about the hydroxyl group. And the reason why the hydroxyl group is special is because serine and threonine have the hydroxyl group in their R chain. So the hydroxyl group is only in serine slash threonine. And because it's only in serine slash threonine, this is gonna, what's going to uh, be targeted by the serine threonine kinase. Because that is going to allow it to get specific. So this brings up a very important question. First of all, the hydroxyl group is what's going to make this unique. And I know some of you out there are saying, you know, there's a hydroxyl group in tyrosine also. 
But that's a separate question. You might want to think to yourself why the hydroxyl group on tyrosine is different from the hydroxyl group in serine and threonine. But the point is, the hydroxyl group makes these amino acids unique. The amino group, the carboxyl group, and the carbonyl group are not going to make this amino acid unique at all. Uh, serine and threonine are unique because of the hydroxyl group in their R chain. And so the answer to this question, ultimately, is going to be uh, the hydroxyl group right? That's going to be the answer. And for those of you who are super inquisitive and wondering why amide was never brought up is because the amide bond is never actually found in either of the amino acids. So the amide bond is actually something that holds amino acids together. So when amino acids come together, they form this amide bond, but we never actually saw it in uh, either serine or threonine. So with this being said, there is something that I wanted to discuss that was left over, and that is the fact that should you memorize the structure of amino acids, because had you not been given this structure of serine, and had you not been given this structure of threonine, you would have never known that it's the hydroxyl group that sets them apart. And for that, I'm only going to give you one piece of advice, and it's right here. Do it. Memorize the amino acids. Every single person I know that has done super, super well on the MCAT has memorized the amino acids inside out. More importantly, it's going to serve you well in your medical career. Uh, most doctors can see amino acids. They visualize amino acids. It's something that should be innate to you by the time um, you're a doctor, uh, if, if not by the time you're a medical student. And I honestly think it will bode you well. Amino acids are the foundations of proteins. They're the foundations of cells, which are ultimately the foundation of the human body. Um, and memorizing them will do you well. You should know like things like um, acetate. Uh, no, wait, not acetate. Aspartic acid is, is an acidic amino acid. You, you know, glute, glutamic acid is an acidic amino acid. Lysine is a, is a basic amino acid. You should know serine, threonine, tyrosine are polar. You should know valine, glycine, uh, nonpolar. See, I'm just listing this off the top of my head, but I really do think it will bode you well. Uh, and with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did, and see you guys in the next one.